my name is Mark Warner. I'm gonna be talking in seven minutes or less about how to successfully commercialize novel dairy proteins. Um, wanna give you a brief background on myself, chemical engineer. I've been in the industry for a while. I was the uh, chief engineering officer in the early days of Impossible Foods, helped scale up the early phases of Heme and have worked for about 50 different companies in the last roughly five years, assisting in scale up for novel proteins. So with that, would kind of like to give some lessons learned on what I've seen throughout this process. So I'm gonna kind of blow through the, the three major steps of the process, hopefully to give people new to the industry a little perspective on what each step is. First one's the pilot step. Purpose is to get a proof of concept, show you can make what you believe you, you want to make, generate some samples, they're probably going to be pretty small, and hopefully be able to generate enough material for your grass application um, since this is a food product. Um, typical fermenter size you're going to run at in the range of, and this assumes a fermentation technology, say in the range of two to a thousand liters. If you want to get those grass samples, it's probably going to have to be at the larger end of that scale. You're only going to generate a kilogram or two per batch. And typically, having worked with a lot of these companies, a pilot plant to run this kind of operation, I would generally see the capital maybe in the one to $5 million range. Um, this is for microbial proteins. If you're thinking about things like cellular products, it's generally going to be higher than that. But one thing that's important here is this is all going to be an R&D cost. And I'm going to talk about when you can start generating revenue, but it's it's definitely not at this stage. Once you successfully move through the pilot, you move on to demonstration scale. This is larger scale. You're trying to generate real engineering data to be able to build a commercial plant. You need to generate larger samples where maybe a few grams got a client potentially uh, interested in your product. They're gonna want kilograms or tens of kilograms to make sample products and things. So you're gonna to have to make larger amounts. Hopefully you've received your grass approval by this step. If not, you're finalizing it, but it's a much larger scale. Usually in fermentation in the range of say, 5,000 liters to 100,000 liters, this is where you're gonna be making metric tons of product per batch. Um, the costs are much higher here. Generally capital order of magnitudes in the range of say, 25 to $50 million. And one thing that's key about this that I can't emphasize enough is this is almost always unprofitable. I see a lot of early stage companies project they're gonna be cash flow break even or generate a lot of revenue during this stage. I seldom unfortunately see that happen. And the reason that's important is you don't wanna run out of money when you don't plan to. I've been through it with some companies and it's a very unpleasant experience. So I would encourage you not to budget a lot of revenue through this demonstration scale, stage. So let's talk about the first commercial scale. This is the first time you're gonna be at large scale. It's um, hopefully gonna be debt financed. You're gonna be hundreds of thousands of liters of fermentation. You're gonna make metric, or excuse me, tens of metric tons, if not hundreds of metric tons per batch. But it's gonna cost you hundreds of millions of dollars to build a facility like this. This is the first stage you're really going to expect to be profitable. Since most companies are pretty early stage, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here other than to mention that this whole process is to de-risk um, your technology. The closer you are to pilot, the higher your risk, but the dollars are smaller. As you get to the right, the dollar values go up, but hopefully you've been able to de-risk it, especially for that first commercial to be able to justify some debt financing and not have to use equity. So let's talk about a little more of the specifics of what it takes to scale up from a technical perspective. This here is a typical example of a secreted protein um, process. You do an aseptic fermentation, remove cells by distax centrifuge, um, separate out large pieces of material by microfiltration, have a backstop for your target protein with ultrafiltration, allowing media and other things to, to be released, and then spray dry the product. This represents probably 20 technologies out there making similar products. It's all how they run the operating conditions in their organisms 
that differentiate the process. So the question is, how do you start at bench scale and transition to these technologies? So what you'll see dropping in are the representative bench scale technologies that represent those commercial scales. First one is a uh, probably a five or 10 liter benchtop fermenter. You ultimately need to get that to hundreds of thousands of liters of fermentation. Same for each of the other steps. What's important here for each one of these things is get a benchtop or pilot unit operation that is clear, as clearly as possible represents what you're trying to do at commercial scale. But secondarily, and you'll see this along the bottom, it's important to understand that scaling an individual unit operation, fermentation, filtration, drying, is different than scaling an entire process. What may help optimize an individual unit operation is not always the best for the overall process. Assuming ultimate product quality and cost are your, your overall goals, it's more important to focus on scaling the overall technology and unit per, or the process than it is the individual unit operation. A brief wrap up, my contact information is here. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out via email. I wanted to highlight a handbook I published last year specific to this topic. It talks in detail technically about how to scale up um, processes related to making um, animal proteins. Um, it's available on Amazon. As an alternate, you'll see my resources page. This handbook is really a compilation of about 30 different white papers I published over a five-year period. If you're interested in going through the individual white papers, you will find those on my resources page. If you prefer a one-stop shop, the book is available on Amazon. And with that, I would like to turn it back to Giza.